Hello, my name is Nini and I'm here with Robert Smith and he's the creator of Utaptics Faster EFT. And I'm very grateful to have him here because I asked him to interview him and have a conversation about shunning. I will tell you a little bit about my story because I got um, this fellowship a few years ago. I grew up in a religion and a few years ago I got this fellowship and this fellowship or excommunicated, it's called different in different religions. And what it basically means is that you, you get kicked out of the group. I was born into the group and they can't talk with you anymore. They can't have social contact with you anymore. Um, they might ignore you. And at that moment when I was there, I had a meeting with the elders and I was in a place I, I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel I deserved paradise. I felt like I had to be punished. And that's what happened. I got kicked out. I got punished. I even went to the meeting where they announced my disfellowshipping. So I would get the punishment myself at that moment. But what I didn't realize is the, the, the after effect of it. So I knew this was going to happen. It was all in my mind. And I, I thought I, was, I could deal with it because I had the program. I was not good enough and I deserved it. But I never imagined the impact it had on my life afterwards. I was in fellowship. A lot of old stuff came up um, about rejection, not belonging, not being good enough. I was the bad one. Everybody sees me as the bad girl. And that was very hard. And I'm a few years far, uh, farther now and I have done a lot of work on myself. But what I do see in um, ex um, communi communities with people who are disfellowshipped, excommunicated, shunned by family, there is so much pain there. And everybody uh, reacts in a different way. Some get angry, some get um, sad, some get even in a downward spiral and they commit suicide. And that really broke my heart because I was teached that shunning is a loving thing. Hmm. And I discovered the opposite and that really touched my heart. Yeah, very good. So, and that's, I, in 2014, that was my, you know, I d if I didn't have this tool, what I'm going to share with you now with Robert, because he created something amazing. And what I hear a lot is that people struggle their whole life with everything, with fears of Armageddon, with fears of hell. You know, they struggle to get a really nice life because they have subconscious programming running their minds and they create the same stuff again and again and again. So how to get out of this? And Robert, he, I'm so thankful that I got this tool because when this happened to me, I had already some tools to work on myself, to get rid of the fears of being um, destroyed. If Armageddon would come any moment, then I would be destroyed with all the wicked people, um, rejection, not belonging, a lot of, lot of stuff. And I know there is hope. I have done my work and I thought I was only happy there. But you can ha be happy anywhere if you're happy inside your mind. Mm -hmm. So, Robert Smith, maybe you want to <laughs> introduce yourself to yeah, everybody. Good. Well, my name is Robert Smith. I'm born and raised in Oklahoma. I created a process called Faster EFT. And now we have the Ataptics. The Ataptics is a professional system that helps people to get control of their life, to help them to clear out some of the, the what we would call bad programming. Although, you know, you're talking about your specific religion you come from, and, and I have my own specific religion, and you have your own. But there, there are typical patterns in, in life, which means, um, you know, when you're, you're born into an environment, whether it's religious or not religious, uh, depending on which brand or not any brand, there is some basic um, trainings that occur, which means uh, you're born into an environment and they teach you how the world is. And so within this environment, they tell you stories, they treat you and they, they give you positive feedback when you're obedient within the system. And there's punishments if you think outside the system. Now, of course, a lot of systems, they are circulating. That means they feed 
back to themselves, which basically means if you want an answer, you look back into where we have the answers, our system, and then of course that perpetuates it and then that's also emotional programming. Now, now you have whatever your religion is, whatever your religion is, each person has their own family environment which inside the family environment has their own emotional drivers such as you know rejection guilt you know not good enough whatever it is and so uh, this help feeds it all so here it is let's say you're born in in a family environment and they're part of a religious group um, the home environment does impact how you view yourself and also, if you go to a, a group, well, it doesn't matter which group, they will teach you your values. They'll, 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 they'll reward you when you're good and they punish you when you're bad. And, and the interesting thing is, is how the mind actually works is that uh, as a child you grow up, you learn your value, you learn who you are, you learn how you fit in the society, you learn um, how to operate. And so your brain starts creating what we call links, positive links and negative links. And it's kind of like, uh, like, like McDonald's. Now, how does McDonald's work? Well, first of all, uh, in advertising, they know that they create a positive link to their food. When you're down, you may want to go eat their food. That means, you know, they would create family fun and excitement and link it with their food. Go hang out with your buddies at McDonald's or go hang out at any other place. And all of a sudden, you have an unconscious connection where your survival part of your brain, which is a reptilian part of your mind, says this is what you're supposed to do. This is how you stay in alignment with it. So if you have years of emotional indoctrination, which are links that build, all of a sudden, you know, you have this idea that you believe that you're bad and that you're guilty and it's your fault that someone else died or someone else had a problem and then this perpetuates it mm -hmm. and then if you start breaking the rules which then you'll be punished which is a spare the rod spoil the child and or whatever mm -hmm. religious thing then when you start trying to break against it next thing you know you feel horrible you feel and then of course if the system says you're bad we won't talk to you and you've been taught within the system that you can only have friends within our system and if you can't have friends outside of your system and you decide if you make a mistake or something happened and then they disfellowship you. Or then even you, change beliefs. Or even there are many that don't agree with the beliefs anymore and they decide to go somewhere else yeah. and lose everybody. You lose yeah. your whole family. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, now again, this is not all groups. Mm -hmm. There are some groups that are a little bit more s severe or more stronger, but the whole system, and then we're talking about any group, whether it's a um, religious group or uh, a bowling team group, or they have what you call the rules. Mm -hmm. If you don't abide by the rules, we'll disfellowship you, we'll reject you, and we won't have anything to do with you. And then you're stuck with your own programming, which, what do I do with this feeling? How do I deal with it? And if you've been raised up in an environment where you're guilty, you're bad, there's something wrong with you, you're broken, then you're gonna just, mm -hmm. it's gonna perpetuate, it's gonna make things mm -hmm. really worse. And also when they are born into a a religious group or whatever that's the only thing they know right and they have all the answers um, ask mm -hmm. and you receive the answers so you don't really have to think for yourself right so then when you lose that part suddenly you're in this big world mm -hmm. and it's, it's black and white thinking because yeah. this is good that is bad and then suddenly you are not on the other side mm -hmm. and you always learn not to get close mm -hmm. to those or make friends mm -hmm. and it's like that's what I have, it's like, I don't belong anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't belong there anymore, I don't belong there because I never was mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's, it's like, you have to start learning again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and deal with right. everything. Well, see, I think you have to understand too, um, there are some people who fit in the group. So you have a belief system I don't fit in. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't fit in, but you definitely don't fit in because that's your belief system. And it may be from where you come from, your own cultural tr training at home, mm -hmm. and then you take it at wherever you go. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand too, you know, you're a part of a group. I'm part of a group. And there are groups that we were raised in. Now some people say they come from one brand of religion and they have bad experiences. Mm -hmm. And then this other brand comes up and then all of a sudden there's what you call the grooming. You know, it's like, um, 
they groom you with kindness, they, they feed you, they give you a home, they fellowship with you, you create a community, you create buddies, and then they start feeding you our system of thinking, mm -hmm. our belief system. And then of course you've already emotionally connected to the entire system, and you had a bad feeling over here with this system, now you enter this one, now I have friends, and then over a period of time you start becoming a good citizen of this group, and then you start acting as they train you to act. It's the same way with relationships. You know, you meet this person, a guy or a woman, and they seem to be really nice, they love you, you have great feelings and great experiences, and then, you, you know, you date for years, and next thing you know, uh, you're really emotionally involved, and then you say, I do, and next thing you know, the person changes, you know? Mm -hmm. Now he's gonna love you like his parents loved him or what he witnessed, and then all of a sudden, he can be manipulating and controlling, and you have a child, and now you're trapped in the system too. So you're like, you know, what do I do? And so right. this is a typical uh, behavioral pattern. Now, uh, you out there, let's say you're coming from a bad relationship, uh, uh, an abusive relationship. Or, or, or a group that you felt like it's you know took it you feel like you've been rejected you've been used you felt like you believed a lie you found out that a lot that it is a lie before you always thought it was true and now you stand up and say hey I want to think on my own I want to have my own belief system I want to to be more spiritual or I don't want to be you know, all my truth has to come from you then you step out and then all of a sudden um, what are you gonna do and this is where you need to learn how to pick up the pieces. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, it, w whichever system you're coming from, there's what you, the memories, the pains, the rejections, the hurts, and the emotional traumas of now your family act as if you're dead. You have nobody. And then what are you gonna do? So you're gonna have to rebuild your whole life. And the whole key of your emotional success, my emotional success, is learning how to to break the emotional links, the emotional pains, and create a better life for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's where the tough part is because if you go out there in the typical world of therapies, typical world of therapies, they don't know how to change bad memories. They don't know how to uh, build your self-value. And so, and they, they don't know how to deprogram the bad programs. Yeah, that's a very and the job. bad programs are so real because mm -hmm. it's so indoctrinated in your unconscious mind and the reptilian part of your mind, or I call it the survival brain, mm -hmm. keeps you acting and then there's like there's something missing or, a, yeah. or I'm lost or, or you feel abandoned and alone, but yet you have people around you who do like you, but you're busy feeling rejected and abandoned because mm -hmm. my family, which is my culture, my foundation of my life, is now been disrupted. Mm -hmm. so, but also a lot of people don't know that they have these programs running. No. So they just act upon it and they do maybe stupid stuff or and hurt themselves again. Right. And that's what, what you see a lot. Right. You know, they, they suddenly yeah. have no rules anymore and they do whatever and they, they get in a downward spiral. Mm -hmm. and, and also like when you don't know your programming, like for me example, when I was in I felt safe. Right. And I, I didn't, I don't really have bad experience in, and I really love them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the people are really kind. So mm -hmm. you, you also, some people have bad experience, some people have good experiences. Right. But what I noticed is when I, it's like I had a belief system, I have to be perfect to be loved. Right. But I was failing all the time because right. I didn't do what was right. right. So when I was not there, then suddenly my fear showed up. What if Armageddon is gonna come now? Mm -hmm. What you know, and then I'm gonna be, yeah, you know, you destroyed were, in Armageddon, and yeah. I'm gonna be a wicked person, and yeah. I didn't want to be a wicked. I, I want to do right. What is right? Mm -hmm. What is good? Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, of course, your story is a very typical story. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna die and go to hell. You know, hell is a life of forever torment. You know, so it's again, it's the same system, but again. Uh, if you did not know about Armageddon, you did not know about hell, you would be tormented. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. I mean, it's because, again, you're taught to believe. Uh, you know, of course, you know, when I come from a, you know, a Christian family, and, and of course, we were taught our specific set of rules. And our rules, as you know, are right. Mm -hmm. Just like your rules they are right. Are right. And of mm -hmm. course, each system says we have the real truth. 
we are the right ones and we have the rocket ship to paradise or heaven or whatever it is that you've been taught. Yeah. And because, see, the whole system has its own pains if you break the rule, blessings if you follow. They have the fear system already and they say, but what if you're wrong? Mm, oh yeah. What if you're wrong? Exactly. And of course, again, that's another form of what we call emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. Because see, everyone who teaches and trains from their own system is absolutely correct, and you're correct. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are watching this and you're coming and you're a part of the system, your system is right because beliefs make it right. And there's all kinds of different systems out there, and they all think this is the right one. So, so what it, what what is a belief then? How would you explain the belief? Well, beliefs are, there's basically two parts that hold a belief together. One, you have your, your proofs, which is uh, the stories they told you, the, the in memories that you make up in your mind. You know, if you've been taught certain things, you've been told, told stories ever since you're a child, and they have books about these stories. And you make up these stories, and you believe the stories, and there's, there's, there's candy when you do it right, and then there's... There's, there's the mills and then the fellowship and the friendship and so this becomes a part of a belief. And then of course what drives a belief home and makes it really real is that you feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone who's a part of a system, they will tell you about an emotional experience. And emotional experiences give beliefs reality. And it doesn't mean it's not true, it's only true who believe mm -hmm. and who feel it. Now someone else, you know, they, they don't have that feeling. And yet they have the same exact feeling from this group to this group and that group because it's what you call a normal pattern that human beings actually follow. And that we are driven by what we call imprints, sensations and emotions and feelings. Now, the problem is if you have bad experiences, you allow these bad experiences to drive your feeling, your life too. Mm -hmm. So knowing how to, to create your own belief built on something that is is what I'd say absolute, you know, and that's the that's the deal because your group, your group, that group, and that group, they all say we have the absolute. Mm -hmm, yeah. So then you're going to have to figure out who's telling the truth, and right. then you say, well, maybe I should pick up my own because you know there's something I have always said. It's one of my sayings. You know, I've been taught I was created in the image and likeness of God, and what I have discovered because I went to many churches trying to figure out, and the weird thing is. I discovered that God is created in the image and likeness of the man who thinks of God or woman. Mm -hmm. That means each one has a different belief system about God, you know. So yeah. it's just really strange. So then again, where's your truth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, different belief systems, different, different feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of yeah. course, one group will kill another group because they don't agree. Yeah. And that's been around forever, you know. And then, you know, we have these groups that's from a foreign country who wrap a bomb around themselves and they will kill innocent people because they think they're doing the right thing for God. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just, it's just interesting. It's very interesting, yeah. So, what I see a lot that is people, they, they, they don't find their help. They, yeah. they struggle for years, even... 20 years and they still struggle with the same things yeah. or even longer exactly yeah. and st still with the same anger because you know if you if you get this fellowship ex excommunicated you're shunned and you lose everyone mm -hmm. it's very emotional mm -hmm. um, I, I personally see it a little bit as emotional blackmail because you know it's like yeah. you I have the keys, so mm -hmm. it's my fault. So I can solve everything. I can make everybody happy again just by going back and do what say, they say. I'm sorry and do what they say, exactly. Mm -hmm. But what if you change your beliefs? I mean, then it's like you can't be true to yourself anymore. Well, not, and that's not according what well, you mean yourself. If you go back to something... Then you're not true to yourself anymore right. because your beliefs have changed. Yeah, or improved, yeah. Or improved. Yeah. So it's like... It's very, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Because I, I see, I see some of these these groups as like, uh, again, a, a narcissistic husband. Mm -hmm. You know, he's always right. You need to do what he says. He has the rules. He will punish you if you not do it right. And then you must do what he says. Mm -hmm. And he's perfectly okay with that. And that is a, is a bizarre way of seeing it, but I see the same exact pattern in relationships. Yeah, and you can't question it either. No. It's like you just have to agree have to take, with it. Yeah. Or, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's not only religion because when people get this fellowship, a lot of their they also come from an environment mm -hmm. that can be a happy childhood, that can be mm -hmm. an abusing childhood. Mm -hmm. So that stuff they have to deal with it too. Right. It's the, the same as a, re a, a marriage. They divorce. He or she loses all the family members. Mm -hmm. Right, so now they can't go see the in-laws. The in-laws don't like you anymore, and now you're the bad one, uh, and then you're you're excommunicated as well from the family. Mm -hmm. Or if you know, like some people may change their sexual orientation, you know, and mm -hmm. then of course family won't accept that or like that either. So it's it it's a system. That it, here's the deal: if if you learn how to make peace with yourself and learn how to release the hurts and the pains and the feelings of rejection. And I venture to say a lot of times, whether you're in a relationship or you're in a, a, a spiritual or a training or a group and you decide to leave, your personal pains and your personal response to this has a lot to do with your own personal training and your personal value. Mm -hmm. And so what you need to do is figure out how to change your, your own internal rules, change your own belief system about yourself. And you know, uh, you can still love and, and appreciate people of different values, but you don't want to be um, feel rejected, feel condemned, and condemn and reject and be angry at them. Because when you're pissed off, when you're angry, and you're feeling what you feel, you're doing it by yourself in your own bedroom or your own kitchen, and it's you now doing it to you. That means you haven't broken the chains between you. So you just need to figure out how to change your memories and change your bad feelings and start building your life, mm -hmm. the life that you choose that will represent your way that you would honor God, however you see God. Mm -hmm. And then that way you can walk in the steps instead of following somebody else's rules. And I honestly believe, you know, you know, I'm, you know cause I was raised Christian and you don't have to be Christian, but it says it's written in your heart it's operating from your, your essence, not by somebody else's rules. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to, to know that, that system, that relationship, and really it's all about you. It's really about you doing it to you. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to you? And learning how mm -hmm. to make peace with that. Because honestly, hurting your children by rejecting them or not speaking to them, this anger, this pain destroys yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling the pain and rejection of what your parents did or your ex-husband or your ex-wife did, this is still yours, not theirs. And this is where what I teach, I show you, and what Nini's trained in the same system, how to give you freedom. You know, because you, if you judge and condemn those who abused you, hurt you, reject you, shun you, disfellowship you, this is yours now. Your value does not come from them. Mm -hmm. It comes from your own internal representations. And, and that's what you need to learn how to do. Is, is yeah, and that, that's the same. Like, we, we, you don't want to be a victim anymore. You want to yeah. take control of your mind, because then you can change. Because yes, they did it to you, but if you're still repeating and rehearsing it in your mind, you are doing it to yourself. So if you, it's like, you know, blaming them, but you still stay a victim. Mm -hmm. You can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. And if you change that, because your change is inside of you, and if you change your hurts, you, the, the grief and loss, not being good enough, whatever you judge yourself or others for, when you change that, you will build up your self-esteem, you will build up mm -hmm. your confidence, your value comes from within. You will take ownership of, every, of everything and you will start making right choices, you will start building a better life, and that, that's what we want to empower you and you can yeah. change and create a better life. Yeah. And that's what it all is about. So that you, you, you take control of your own minds. Mm -hmm. And what Robert has created is something you can do yourself. You can do at home. It's, I've done so many things already and this is the best out there. If you start learning about how your mind works, about the subconscious programming and how you can reprogram it, by letting go of all the experiences, then your whole world can change for the better. Mm -hmm. You can be happy instead of tormented or whatever. Yeah. You can build up really nice, really new relationships, find people who really love you for who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and mainly it starts with loving yourself. 
you yeah. know, you'll you'll love others, you'll hate others, you'll despise others, you'll do at the same rate that you already do inside you. So learn how to make peace with yourself. And one of the things I talk about we call ultimate forgiveness. And forgiveness, you don't know, say, I forgive them for what they did, I forgive them for what they did. But ultimate forgiveness is actually going inside yourself and releasing all the hurts and pains you carry for the reasons you need to forgive them. Because if you release it from inside you, you're no longer drinking the poison thinking it will kill them. It's you. And when you discover your real value, your real connection with the, the, the divine source or, or with your own self, you will start operating from, from kindness from, from, because you do it inside yourself. And what you do inside yourself, you do to others. And, and realize, hurt people hurt others. Mm -hmm. Kind people are kind to others. And so that's what you need to do is learn how to just be, just make peace with this. This is a learning experience. Let go of the hurts, let go of the pains and move forward. Create the life you want and do not jump out of the frying pan into the fire because so you can jump from one mess to another mess. If you don't change the mess between your ears, that's what you're going to do. Yeah, and that's also what happened a lot. We got examples of people that got this fellowship and messed up their life. And that's what we got an example. Look at mm -hmm. them. They're not happy, you yeah. know, because they left and they do all these stupid things or whatever. Yeah. And that's just, you know, I had that too, like the first time, you mm -hmm. know, I thought I lost God. And then, you mm -hmm. know, you, it's like you lose everything. Yeah. yeah, really, I mean, I venture to say, you left the group and you thought that was God. Yes. And that's not God. No, it's true. God is, now I know God is bigger than that. But yeah, yeah, but so that's, that's the biggest thing is, is find, a, find that peace. Mm -hmm. Find that peace that you will have. Yeah. yeah, and what I notice is when you start loving yourself and, mm -hmm. and get the value from within, you, want, you, you do things, um, you don't want to hurt yourself, you don't want to hurt others. You, you, you make decisions out of wisdom, out of, mm -hmm. you know, good, good thinking. Mm -hmm. And, you have, and to have, you have to understand one more thing, too. I think it's very important. Um, they, whoever that is in your life, they're doing what they've been taught to do. They've been do they're doing what they've been programmed mm -hmm. to do. And they will do it with or without you being there. This is their problem. Now, what you do to you is what you've been programmed to do and you will do it with or without them too. So what you want to do is really learn how to change yourself. Make peace with yourself, love yourself, be kind to yourself, and whatever you practice in yourself, you'll give to others. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah, and everybody has to take responsibility for their own things. Yeah. It's like, you know, with my parents, there was a time, okay, I will just go back because I didn't want to see them, you know, unhappy because mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I will say it. They they also chose the religion with the with the with the consequences, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, and it they is. already know how to be unhappy without with or without you in the group. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, so we're, everybody will do what yeah. they know how to do, mm -hmm. and of course, unfortunately, we call it the low mall of the world. You, you, you make me feel bad. Yeah, you have to change so I feel better. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's not the that's not how it works. Right. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. thank you for this. Yeah. So, so, how can they change? How can they start using your tool to mm -hmm. make changes? Mm -hmm. How it works? Because it, do, it looks weird, you know, if it's you not, see it. Well, it makes sense. It doesn't look weird, but it is. It does. Different. I I watched your videos first time, mm -hmm. and then I saw you using the tapping, and mm -hmm. I was like, mm, what is this? <laughs> and then you know, I thought, hmm. Hypnosis is with hypnosis involved. So I started watching all the videos to make sure there's no hypnosis or weird stuff. Yeah. But that's also my belief system. Stay away from that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, so how to change yourself. Of course, what I teach, and you, you can watch my videos, and of course, um, knowing how you think, knowing how you process information. And of course, we use a process called tapping. And that you can do it without tapping. It doesn't matter if you use it, but it seems to be a very fast way of processing and changing problems. Uh, how you can get control, the first thing is, is educate yourself. 
-hmm. educate yourself and check and make sure what you're being taught is universal. It means it's not anything special, no special stories, no special anything special. It has to be universal everywhere you go. That means it can't be um, a special story to make it real. So, and then the second thing is, is not only educate yourself, but use it. Turn the truth that you find and make it a part of your life. As you make it a part of your life, you're going to start discovering, first of all, a lot of our problems starts with our own inner thinking, our own inner communication, whether it's a picture in your head or words you say or sensations in your body. When you understand this is about you and what you do inside you, then you're going to start saying, okay, why do I have these problems? And the reason why you have problems is because of where you come from. That means from your cultural training, from your personal experiences with friends, people, relatives, the church, wherever you come from. And you're holding these memories against you. And then if you can figure out that once you release the pain in the memories and change how you represent your memories, change how you hold it. Because see, this is, this is the magic. If there was such a thing as magic, this is the real deal. Uh, you will use a memory to feel bad. You'll think of something to feel bad. If you change how you think it, you also change how you act. Now, science has clearly shown that my memories do change. And you, can, you know it yourself. You can think how you used to like a certain food and now you don't like it, or you used to hate a food and you do like it. And that's because your brain has changed the meanings. You, you, you used to like one person and now you don't like the person, or you didn't like a person, now you do, because how you represent things start to change. And that's how you can change you, you can, how you change your past. And as you start doing this, one, you're gonna build personal value here inside yourself. And what you do here, you do to other people. So now you're going to be creating a better and more meaningful relationship with yourself and a better meaningful relationship with other people. And as you do that, then you'll start realizing your value comes from your meanings. And since it comes from your meanings, you can realize that someone may have a problem with you. That's not your problem. That's their problem. Now, you can learn from this, but you can also say, this is not for me. This is not the present I'm going to take. This is your issue. And then you can just move on. And then you'll start operating from non-judgment, non-attachment, and actually start creating your life by intention instead of getting the life from your messes of the past. And that's by changing yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you work, you work on your subconscious programming? Yeah. Because you, you do want something consciously and you want a better life. Mm -hmm. You need to change the, the, the proofs mm -hmm. that support you what you want. Mm -hmm. Because if your subconscious works against you, the subconscious wins. So, and that's mm -hmm. what FASA EFT does. It, will, it can change. It shows you how to change. Exactly. It shows changes. you. So the, here's yeah. a good thing. People don't know how their mind works. They don't know how to change themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, and I, you know, I say, you ask me, well, how do they do this? Well, first of all, education. I have free videos here on YouTube, tons of free videos. I have a, home, a training course. I have an online training course and a live training course. Because, see, my personal belief is invest in yourself, invest in your mind, invest inside your world. Because what your world has in here, you'll produce out there. And I think that's the best thing I can tell you. I mean, definitely I would say, hey, my system is the best in the world. But then again, this is my belief. You have to figure out what I'm saying is true or not true. And that's the key, mm -hmm. if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. And for my personal experience, it has helped me so much to get the changes I want. And that I, I'm very grateful for that, that I, that I found you on the right time also. And yeah, I would just yeah. try, want everybody to, you know, to yeah. learn this tool to get your life back to, mm -hmm. you know, to get in control of your own mind, mm -hmm. in, of your own life, and just get, you can create a happy life. Yeah. And that's, I think that's very important, and that's very powerful, yeah. too. Because so, my, my philosophy about life is this, um, the power is within you, your value is within you, it's all about you. You don't need anyone else, you need you. Yes, you need to learn. You need to learn how to do it. You need to learn how to take control. And you must take control. It's still you. 
And if you can like yourself, be kind to yourself, and do right within yourself and for yourself, life gets better. Yeah, and you're far too smart to be the only one, the only thing standing in your own way. Yeah. You can change whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever. And that's, yeah. yeah that's I, I would say one more thing too. Those other groups, all the other groups, if they say you need us to survive, that's the first sign to run. Mm -hmm. Because that means you'll be attached to them forever. And the only way your value will have to come from them. And they don't like people who think on their own. They don't like people they can't control. Because they can't use you. Mm -hmm. And so I always say, be your own personal yeah, power. It's like you need to grow up again, in yeah. a way. Yeah. And start thinking for yourself, creating your own good values, yeah. and, and stand on your own feet. Because that's, it's like, you know, when you, I have two kids, and I want them to become grown up, that they can stand on their mm -hmm. own feet and do their own thinking. If they don't know how to operate without me, then I haven't done a good job. Right. So Emotional intelligence. Adults. Emotional intelligence, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if you would like to know more below this video, you can sign up for a free course or you can also contact me if you would like have to have personal sessions. I'm an advanced level 4 practitioner and I help people to change what they want to change. But you can also learn it for yourself with a free course, start learning how the mind works, mm -hmm. how you can use this tool. And the good thing is, it's not a talking therapy or whatever. It really can make changes. Yeah. And that's, you know, a lot of time, what mm -hmm. I also see in the groups is that they go to a therapist and they don't understand where they come from. Mm -hmm. And they don't feel hurt, they don't, you know. So, and I know where you come from. I would love to help you. You're not alone and you are loved. Mm -hmm. So, Start learning this amazing tool and make changes in your life the way you want it. Good. Yeah, thank Good you. Job. Thank you All so right. much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Peace.